You can't count, can you? You know, just as a general philosophy, I tend to not look up the time period of a historical piece that I'm watching until after I finish watching it. For instance, Black Sails. I didn't look up that time period that it took place in. Even though it's a fictional story, and it also contained elements from a novel. So that makes it twice fictional, right? Still, I know that they would be taking inspiration from real events. For instance, there were real character, you know, historical characters in it, who they probably had died in some way. As a matter of fact, um, Blackbeard, I think, was killed in some way. Not quite what they showed on the show, but still was killed. Same with, uh, oh boy, that was hanged. Can't remember his name, but you know what I'm talking about. Like, uh, that was, those are two pretty shocking deaths, especially the, the second one, the guy who's hanged. Pretty shocking damn death. So, of course, everybody from the 1800s was going to die eventually because, you know, it's been 200 years. But if they're going to die violently, chances are that's going to happen on the show. So I wouldn't want to know that, right? And, you know, and another situation is... Um, in A Song of Ice and Fire, that was inspired by the War of the Roses. So if you looked up the War of the Roses, you'd probably get some of the inspirations that inspired George R. R. Martin. Obviously, his story is not historical. It's not set in Europe. It's set in an alternate reality. But he still took inspiration from these events. Same with the Dance of Dragons. It's, it was inspired by something I forget, actually forget. It was another England monarchy thing. So I wouldn't want to look that up either. And so in this case, you know, getting to the point here... I'm not going to look up what happens in the 20s. Obviously, Nucky isn't a real character, but I'm sure he's based on somebody who was real in Atlanta City at the time. D Nucky is familiar to me. But I think the last name is wrong. I could. Th this isn't my area of expertise, but I think the last name is wrong or something, or it's like inspired by somebody who had the nickname Nucky, but like completely different character name. Still, if I was to look up wh whoever that character is and look at his entire biography, I'd probably get spoiled on some shit. So I'm not going to look at the 20s. Like, I'm going to stay away from the 20s until I finish watching the series, and then I'll go, because I'm curious about several things already. Exactly when Prohibition started. When was the Roaring Twenties? When did they, the, the time period we actually call the Roaring Twenties. When was that? Because I don't think it was, it was, you know, January 1st, 1920 to, you know, December 31st, 1929. There was a time period in there that we consider the Roaring Twenties. I'm curious about that. I don't know if we're going to hit up against that before the series is over. I, this either went five or seven seasons, so I'm not sure. But either way, I don't think we're going to cover a massive amount of time period. Probably five years at the most. Now, I wouldn't be surprised that, like, you know, say the first three seasons are 20 to 23. And then maybe between seasons three and four or four and five, they'd have like a two or three, five year time jump or something. That wouldn't shock me. I think they are going to keep in the 20s. But I don't think they're going to do a Mad Men thing where there was very intentionally... From the beginning of the decade to the end of the decade. But again, yeah, Mad Men, that's another one. I wouldn't, I, I'm not looking up shit until after they, that time. Like, for instance, I'm okay with looking up uh, some specific details about Kennedy's death after we pass that period in, in you know, the, uh, the show. So, yeah, um, I may voice questions, or even if I'm not voicing questions, I'll have things I'm saying that, you know, you, it, clearly, like, there's. Like I said, I never. This was the twenties was never my field of study, but I look. I've looked at all of history at, at least on a cursory level because I, I love history. But you know, this is typically these days. What will happen is I watch something like they'll do a time traveling show or something, or you know, timeless or um, heroes of tomorrow, legends of tomorrow. I guess it was called. Uh, they'll go to a time period, and I'll look up that time period, see how accurate they were, and then I'll get a little bit of knowledge from that decade or whatever that that historical event or that thing. And so I would not that I studied the decade, but I, I got a little bit of detail on it. So, so anyway, um, the point is, I'm not, I, I, I don't know if we're going to see the Roaring Twenties or not, but um, I'm interested in seeing that. I don't think I've seen that depicted too much. I, I know about flappers. I know about the speakeasies. I know about the mobsters, how big they were in the twenties. And I know about Tommy guns and that's about it. <laughs> I love they referenced Tommy guns in the last episode, 600 bullets. Yeah, but most of them are going to be straight in the air. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and get into this. Oh. <laughs> We're spending a lot of time with her. I guess she's the other part of the story. 
I assume they were going to be, you know, she'd be immediately hooking up with Nucky, but I, I'm sure that's the end game of the show, but like probably not for a while. They're telling two stories. They're telling what it's like at the top and they're telling what it's like with the small folk and she is what it's like with the small folk. So we're going to be spending a lot of time with her apparently. Little need to calm down over there. I'm trying to sleep. Consider what we know they cut that alcohol with. I wouldn't be drinking that shit. As far as I'm concerned, they can take St. Patrick's Day and sell it for scrap. Yeah, man, that's not nice. I love being Irish. What I hate is the yearly display of crime, yeah. wing and public drunkenness that goes. Oh yeah, public drunkenness. We don't make money off that. <laughs> I just could not be having these conversations with an elevator man in the car with me. No, Martin, Kings and mobsters and rich people just don't understand how much the the service people hear. Because it's like they, they, they fade into the, the background. They're like wallpaper. I beg your pardon, sir. Would you like something? No. Yeah. Then why'd you call me over here, you fucking fragile bitch? Breakfast when I gotta raise yeah. a stick. I live here. It's a courtesy. But you gotta live here to get started? Yes, motherfucker. Hi. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you sensitive yeah, bitch. But, like, they fade into wallpaper, right? So, like, you know, they'd be saying shit and not realizing people are in the room. In fact, like, there's a good parallel between that and reaction channels. I had a, we'll call it a discussion. A few weeks back with somebody in the comments of, uh, I forget what, it may have been Thor Reacts, it may have been something else. I think it was Thor Reacts. He had talked about how, um, oh, I know what it was. It was, Thor was crying about something, you know, like actually physically crying. The, the scene got emotional, so he started to cry a little bit. And somebody in the comments was talking about, well, you know, it's, I'm sure it's hard to cry when you, you know, the camera, you know, the cameras are there all the time. And so I made the comment that, like, after you've done a couple hundred reactions, the camera's not there anymore. It doesn't feel like the camera's there. And maybe it's because I edit my own shit, so if I do something, like, um, I have to blow my nose, for instance, and it's not a full reaction, then I know I can edit that out. And people don't have to see me blowing my nose. And I wouldn't want to see that on a reaction channel, and I don't want anybody else to have to see that, right? So... I have the security of knowing I can just be myself when I'm the only person editing these things. Now, these big channels, they have other editors, but whatever, you know, that's like a, I guess I'd be like a priest. It's a father confessional kind of thing. So I'm sure they have a, uh, the security of that too. But so once you know you have some editorial control, it's probably different on like a reality show, even though I've heard this about reality shows too, like in Survivor, for instance, after the first day, they don't think about the cameras anymore. They're aware of them tangentially, but you can't be paranoid. You can't be on your best behavior 24-7 for 39 straight days. You just can't do it. The human brain is not wired that way. The human brain is wired that you can get used to anything over if you get long enough. If you have a long enough time period, you can get used to anything. You hate peanut butter? You can get used to peanut butter if that's all you have to eat. You know, like anything. You can get used to anything. It's how we're able to wear glasses and not be constantly distracted by the fact that we're wearing glasses. If you've never worn glasses, put something over your face and your eyes like, the fuck? And your eyes constantly, you're looking at that. You're not looking at what you're supposed to be looking. You're looking at the fact that there's this thing right here distracting you. It's right here. It's in your face. Wear glasses for a couple of years. You don't even fucking know they're there. Literally, there are people that will be looking for their glasses and they're wearing them. Because they don't know. Now, how can you not know? They're right there on your face. You can see them all the time. It's because we tune it out. That happens on Survivor. You tune out the cameras. And I argue it happens on reaction channels because it happens with me. I don't think about the cameras. Even though I'm talking to the camera. Basically, you flip a switch, you start talking your thoughts instead of thinking them. And yes, in the back of your mind somewhere, you're aware that there is, you know, you're being recorded. But you're natural. You're not putting on an act. You're not putting on a facade. You know, you're just, it's like, it, it, I've said many times, it's like I'm sitting here watching this with my dad. So, um, I'm just, I'm the same way now that I was five years ago when I was watching shit with dad, 10 years ago when I was watching shit with dad, 15 years ago when I was watching shit with dad. Before reaction channels existed, I was doing reaction channels with that, right? That's what I've said many times. That's why I think I'm so good at it, because I've been doing it for 20 years. So, to me, there's no difference. And so, like, uh, after the first couple hundred of videos I shot, like, I'm, I'm not self-conscious anymore. I don't think about it. I don't think about the fact that I'm being recorded. So, I think it's the same way with rich people and the servants. You, if you've been around service all your life, you're a king or you're a rich person or you're a mobster and you have minions and you have people that are bringing you shit, especially back here before everything was automated, you need people to bring you everything. You need people to do everything for you. They're around all the time. You stop thinking about it. 
they don't exist to you. They're just part of the fucking furniture. And you know what happens? When when you reach that point, which they keep clear they reached years ago, you start saying and doing things that you normally would not say and do in front of other people. And that can be very dangerous. You know, that's how you get all these fucking tell-alls. That's why they have non-disclosure clauses and stuff and contracts with the rich people. You know, like, you, if, you, if you're going to be the fucking, you know, personal assistant to uh, uh, Bill Gates or whatever, you can believe there's a very strong fucking prosecutable non-disclosure agreement, right? That's why they have that, because they understand that they just, you know, you can't fake it all the time. And not only that, not only can you not fake it all the time, you, you, uh, you don't even realize you should because these people just fade into the background. So I don't know if this can be applied relevant for this show or not. But the servants are so ever-present if the writers never take advantage of the fact that these people aren't thinking about the fact that servants are around them all the time, they miss an opportunity. We're there to celebrate their heritage, not be bored by your palavering. Yeah, you're an asshole. No wonder he don't like you. <laughs> Public speaking. Night, oh, man. Bad enough He's actually dad, put time and work into this, man. He went to school for this. Let the man speak. Goddamn. Fine. Two minutes. Daniel fucking <laughs> He's such an irritable fuck. But you, you have to give him a concession at that point. You have to say, okay, cool. Bill Schroeder. Yeah, the fuck you looking at? Widow Schroeder. Some soda bread. Soda I bread. I have to look that up. We can leave it with a bellhop. He'll see that I get it. Rich motherfucker. For your birthday, you received many fine gifts. For me. Oh, She's shit. Hard. Blow her off. Damn, dude. Shut her down. <laughs> what about the yes. Life's complicated. Yeah, enough. no shit. <laughs> He'll be hitting that. But, like, you know, clearly his brother's invested in this. You treat him like a dick all the time. He does a lot for you. You got to throw him that bone, which he did, right? But you had to be a dick about it. Oh, god damn. Man, that sucks ass. No more midget shit. Goddamn right. Midget shit's what they're paying us for. Yeah. Now, just talking about this nonsense. This fucking Celtic dinner. Oh, yeah, I gotcha. Oh, they're playing leprechauns, aren't they? Of course they are. What am I supposed to tell Nucky? He's dependent on us. Yeah. Let him wear a leprechaun. Yeah, jet. you got damn right. Time to have group. Tensions are high everywhere, man. If I can get us a raise. Oh, shit. Raise, huh? I'll tell him we want 10 bucks a man. Yeah. <laughs> I might do Yeah. <laughs> you got damn right. Ten uh, what's up? Where's my fucking shit? <laughs> well, Nucky better come through. This shit was hit or miss because they weren't even trying to get a raise. They were like, fuck this, right? So it's not even like they're trying to hustle you. Oh, shit. That's okay. I like the spirit. But Someone shut a door. Yeah, well, dude. Clearly, she's got PTSD. You should know something about that, motherfucker. what they call it back then? Thousand Yard Stare? Oh, while well, I had a pause, I did look up soda bread, by the way. And um, it's apparently an Irish thing, so they got that right. And apparently, it's very good. So he missed out, dumbass. What happened What here? the fuck you think happened, man? I'd be drunk as fuck. Believe that. Don't be ashamed. <laughs> it's opium, not a milkshake. Oh, it's opium. Fuck. Never mind. Jesus. Mofer is drinking opium like it's fucking vodka. And it's like the sun just... Yeah, I bet it is. Can't believe his storyline went to Chicago like this. I expect him to be like a steady pain in the ass there locally, right? Come on, George. The I should know when they introduce Al Capone. How are we fixed on that anyway? Green beer? Food coloring came today. Yeah, better have. Green beer. Those poor Celts well lubricated so they can get through Eli's re-election yeah, speech. Well, didn't you hear? He's Daniel Webster now. <laughs> yeah, that's the second yeah, time you mentioned that already. Shit. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Quit repeating your joke, asshole. Wait, all right. Come on, give us a sample. Fuck all y'all. Fuck you. There's your sample. Yeah, I like this. I like Eli. I like him a lot. Don't get me wrong. He's a psycho. I'm just talking about it as a character, right? Look how much money he's got. He better not balk at this fucking $10. You know, $5 piece raise, right? Right from their hands into your... Yeah, <laughs> not bad, dude. None of us was so naive as to believe that prohibition would end all... But this is ridiculous. I was beginning to think you were ill. No. I was that ill, was motherfucker. Was looking after your children. She's asking the important questions. I guess the, the audience would be wondering, right? I would just assume if she's here, somebody's taking care of the kids. Why would I need, you know, that, that's a, just an obvious assumption. I received a letter uh, from my cousin. One of her neighbors, the widow of a dairy farmer, had fallen on hard. Oh shit! 
Do we really need to hear your email? Six children to feed. Temptation got the oh, better shit. of her. So she decided to mix up some gin in her Outrageous. Using a Lock her ass up. From a she apparently got everybody killed, the right? The idea being they'd sell it in town for a profit. Yeah, but we burned their, we burned their farm to the ground. And denatured alcohol. Let the mixture set while she went off to... It blew up and killed everybody. Did. Her little one got into the alcohol, poisoned herself. Yeah, of course she did. Illegal stills yeah. everywhere. I passed by Ettinger's. All this those. same thing happened to one of my neighbors. The local authorities lack the ability or the inclination to enforce the law. This is outrageous. I heard Doc Holland is writing prescriptions for whiskey. Oh, shit. You don't even have to be... In yeah. <laughs> it's like what they're going to do with marijuana in 100 years. This marching is all well and good. But we, we need, need to start busting some heads. Albers. This morning I saw barrels of beer. Oh, shit. Snitch. Being loaded into a garage behind my home. This is what I... <laughs> yeah, thought. exactly. Thank you, Snitch. Perhaps Mr. Thompson could be... A Him? <laughs> She's still simping for this friend. motherfucker. Yeah, what you doing there? You a slam piece? Just to say, he's been of great assistance since my husband passed. Professional baseball has reached a crisis. Charges of crooked. Oh shit! Last year's. Is that the Black Sox thing? That was nineteen nineteen, wasn't it? A New York gambler at it. Oh seat. shit! Doesn't mention you by name, does? I'm still mad. Everything but. <laughs> yeah, it was you, huh? <laughs> say it ain't so, Joe. See, now that's somebody that's aware that there's a minion around who can't be hearing this shit. So what? A Battelle, followed by a very public... Yeah, we should have probably kept that in the down low. Is it a crime now for a fellow to eat dinner? The dinner was innocent, Counselor. <laughs> Pitch me on fixing the World Series by... <laughs> he pitched you, huh? ...scheme which you threw cold water upon immediately. I don't know. Isn't that correct, Mr. Roth? Oh, I get it. You want me to lie? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> then there you have it. Yeah, nobody's gonna believe this shit. And I do about this article. Kick his ass. You do nothing, Arnold. Or a horse shit. Or a horse shit. You don't rub it off. You let it dry. You let it Sounds stinky. Then you... Good metaphor, though. All right. Get back here and finish this shit. The world... Better not hurt anything. And the horse shit hasn't dried <laughs> yet. Hey, man. If you don't want to get muddy, don't roll around with the pigs. Yeah, sir, it's that bitch again. She wants something else from you. Carl Healy wants her work. Who? Oh. Yeah. What does he yeah. want? <laughs> hey, man, don't just come barging in here. The boys, you know, there's trouble. In River City. How's your dad? Will he be at the dinner this year? We just skipped to the bite, <laughs> Oh, goddamn. That's a... Really? Well, that's not what I... Carl, I'm busy. You'll be doing me a huge favor. I was just trying to romance this shit. For enduring that kind of humiliation. Dancing a jig in a leprechaun outfit? You call that humiliation? Would you do it, motherfucker? They think it's funny. How much do you want? Oh, shit. Dollars a man. What's that, three bucks a foot? You fucking asshole. And with prohibition, there'll be no booze. Yeah, you, Come on, you wish, motherfucker. I only look like a child. <laughs> well, they're not going to show up, dude. That leaves me paying 68, which is 12 less look than you. Look at you trying to work math on this shit. Look at him, you got all this money and shit. You can definitely afford it, so you're just, you're basically fucking us over. Man, well, you're going to lose a couple of those leprechauns, man. Hello, ladies. Yeah, so she arranged it, huh? Thank you so Probably much as much for the this. woman on the left as the woman on the right, because he already has a rapport with her. I eat the soda bread. Yeah. Pardon? Oh, yes. <laughs> yep, she knows you're a lying cocksucker, so thank you for establishing that. She feels compelled to tell you about. Oh? I've already killed one man for you. How much more do you want? Who looked familiar, but I couldn't really place him, was supervising. Yeah, it's probably one of my minions. Why, that's outrageous. I saw it with my own eyes. Yeah. It must have been appalling. <laughs> yeah, it this was. is appalling. Quite. <laughs> is she hustled him? Birthday party must have been about that Look at him. He's, he's spending this shit around. I was making a delivery. It was quite a celebratory atmosphere. Some champagne and whiskey may have even been drunk. This is outrageous. Of acquaintance drinks only in moderation. Yeah. If they drink at all. She better co sign that shit. Charter, thank you for sharing this information. He brought that shit up for a reason. You give the details to my brother and we'll shut down that garage. <laughs> yes, we will. There's no gambling happening in this establishment, goddamn. Oh, thank you for my winnings. <laughs> Just get this isn't a personal favor, Mrs. Schroeder. <laughs> uh, 
I realized that. Yeah, <laughs> keeping her at arm's length, man. I thought that they were going to be lovers. They may be opponents. Because the way he, he fucking outed her for the going to the dance in front of a uh, old lady, that he did that. That was strategic, man. I'm actually thinking they may be in opposition to each other, which is fascinating. Way more fascinating than if they were going to be lovers. It could still be both, of course. On TV shows, it typically is. But, like, that's still a, that's a wrinkle I was not expecting. I'm going to kill a motherfucker over her. Jesus so. Christ. She's a fucked up world. Yeah, no shit. It's not that bad. She was a Philly. Jesus, dude. What an asshole. Dying to her. But she got her gone. Yeah, yeah, I get that. This is a cat house. Not the hotel chain. <laughs> yeah. She don't know anything. Well, this is awkward. Quit rubbing your boner against me. I cover it? She makes that much. She did. Yeah, goddamn. I guess I better find a hotel. She got till Friday. <laughs> hey, man, just let her move in with you. Whatever you're... Uh, he's, is he... I can't remember. He's living with somebody, I think. A couple people. Can't really do that. So what did he want? Nothing good. Nothing. Good. Yeah, she knows a lot of motherfucker when she hears one. Don't get ahead of yourself. Good. Really? Ma'am? Fuck you guys doing? What are you doing? Green by tomorrow. For St. Pat. So nothing's been done about this. Who's in charge here? Boss. Guess we have to tune her up. Mr. Neary. So, so she did know him. I suspected. Like what club is that? Yeah. <laughs> Say, I'm from Kerry. Yeah, she's pissed. You're meant to be too goddamn loud. Did Mr. Thompson not speak with you today? Your business here. She started we'll putting this shit. By tomorrow. She's put most of this stuff. Listen, she's fellas, this... you gotta keep it yeah, down. Yeah. People are trying to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> this is a residence, motherfucker. We pour you off a growl of <laughs> Come for the city. <laughs> <laughs> you loud ass motherfuckers. <laughs> but yeah, she's putting this guy. So I think she's gonna be an opponent. Did not really see that coming. Fucking three o'clock in the morning, motherfuckers loud grab assing and screaming at each other and knocking fucking barrels around and shit. I know that's not really what it's about, but she's lucky he thought that's what that was about. Because if he realized that she's trying to sit around the cops, that'd be a whole different conversation. <laughs> yeah. Starting to put this shit together. I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Thompson is not... Man, I heard him, motherfucker. He's like... He knows I've been waiting. He's eight feet away. It takes her a long time to get a clue, I'd say. question is, what is she going to do about it? God damn. That, apparently. Fuck this piece of clothing in particular. That's the one she stole, I think, right? Maybe she'll go to the feds. Then there's this piece of shit. Blended scotch whiskey. Oh, shit. Yeah, that's what she's going to do. I have a different thing I want to snitch about this time. This is my colleague, Agent Simpson. Leave us. You said I should come to you if I had information. Oh, shit. Yeah, this is a fucking problem. This might... Pull down your sleeves, put on your jacket, bring Mrs. Schroeder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta roll down my sleeves because there's a woman present, goddammit. I was here sitting there thinking they're gonna be lovers. And she may be <clears> dead <throat> by the end of the season. Like, it's changed that much. This is how dramatically this changes things. Like, Muffers might kill her over this. Come on, man, goddamn. My home is a garage. And she's talking to them directly. Yeah. If they get busted, it's they're coming straight to her. How many? <laughs> uh, Quite a large a quantity. shit ton. Could you give me an estimate? Ninety-three. You can't count, can you? 